Morning, Tom. Morning, George. Frosty again, ain't it? Ah, but at least it'll be dry for the bonfire tonight. Oh, ah, they're lighting it at half past seven, ain't they? Ah, well, I hope Lord Russett's got a good lot of fireworks this year. Oh, well, he should have. He ordered them down at Floggett's, and you always get good value from Gert and Daisy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the BBC presents Floggits with Joan Sims, Hugh Paddock, Ronnie Barker, Doris Rogers, Ron Moody and Elsie and Doris Waters. There we are. Daisy, I made out Lord Russell's bill for the fireworks. Shall I send it up to him? No, Gert, leave it. We'll be seeing him at the bonfire tonight when he gets back from London. Oh, of course we will. Here, Daisy, I've often wondered who exactly was Guy Fawkes. Was he a Prime Minister? No, no. Mind you, he should have been. He had more good ideas about Parliament than anybody else. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, he tried to blow it up. Oh, and did he? No. Well, you know what it's like in Parliament, Gert. There's so much hot air comes out of there, it kept blowing the match out. <laughs> Bert's uncle stood for Parliament, didn't he, Days? That's right. What's he doing now? Oh, he's not doing anything now, Gert. Oh, why? Well, he got elected. Oh. <laughs> Mind you, he did ask a question in the house once. Oh, what was that? He said, would they mind closing the windows? The draught was keeping him awake. <laughs> oh, it's a funny business altogether. Who do you support, Gert? Arsenal every time. <laughs> No, I mean, who'd you vote for in the last election? Oh, I can't remember his name, but he was ever so nice. He had lovely, fair, curly hair. Oh, oh right, lovely, lovely, look. Yeah. I'm to think of what the suffragettes went through just for this. <laughs> well, come on, let's try and get ahead so we'll have plenty of time to get ready for tonight, eh? Yes, do you remember that big bonfire night in Knothole Street just after the war? Oh, do I? That was the year Bert had his appendix out. I remember sitting by his bed as he came round, watching the nurses bonfire through the window. Then the doctor came in and pulled the curtains. Why? Well, he said he didn't want Bert to think the operation was a failure. <laughs> <laughs> that was the year he had a barney with old Mother Butler. Well, what about? Well, you see, she brought out an old armchair and Bert went to throw it on the bonfire. Oh, she was furious. Why? Well, she was still sitting in it. <laughs> <laughs> I say, I wonder how old Mr Niggle's getting on with the guy for tonight. Oh, I don't know. He's been very mysterious. All he'd tell me was it was going to be more lifelike than Cyril. Oh, I mean, that's not saying much. Here, yeah, that reminds me, Cyril ought to be back by now. He shouldn't be all day just taking the fireworks up to the castle. No, but he's been gone long enough to take him up to Edinburgh Castle. <laughs> but listen, are you sure you gave him the definite instructions? Oh, yes, yes. I gave him the key Lord Russett left. I told him what room they were to go in and to lock the door after him. I'm back, Mrs Floggett. Did you do all I told you? Yeah, everything. And what about the key? Oh, that's safe enough. Well, where is it? Well, after I locked the door, I shoved the key back under. Nobody will get in at the fireworks now. Well, that was very clever of you. Oh, it wasn't nothing much, really. <laughs> There's just one thing. Yeah? How do we get the fireworks out? Well, you just <clears throat> unlock the door. What with? The key. And how do we get the key? Well, it's in the... Oh, that'll be a bit tricky, won't it? <laughs> but you'll think of something, won't you? We'll have to. Lord Russett said that was the only key there was to that room. Cyril, every firework we had in stock is in that room. And unless we get them out, there'll be no display tonight. Well, don't get on at me. I've done my best. Done your best? You've got every firework in the village locked up in a room where no one can get at them and throw away the key and you say you've done your best. Well, none of us are perfect. Oh. <laughs> yes, but what are we going to do? Come on, we'd better get up there and get them out. Come on, Gert. All right. I'll tell you what, I'll put out the back in ten minutes sign. Oh, are you closing the shop? Good. Why? Well, that means I can knock off and have an early lunch. Oh, no, you don't. Come on, genius. Up to the castle. Well, I don't know what you're going to do. That door is three inches of solid oak. Look, Mr Thatcher, are you sure you haven't got another key? Oh, yes, I've several more. Oh, fine. Of course, none of them open this door. <laughs> Mind you, the master key to the castle would open it. Well, where's that? Oh, we lost that years ago. <laughs> you won't get that door open without brute force. It's three inches of solid oak, you know. I'd have a go at it myself if it wasn't for my operation. Here, I could do that. I've seen him do it on the pictures. Seen him do what? Take a run at it and knock it down with my shoulder. <gasps> this is something I must see. <laughs> three inches of solid oak, you Here know. Here I come. Ready or not? Well... What have you stopped for? I just remembered. When the bloke on the pictures did it, he broke his arm. 
<laughs> you should have used your head. You couldn't have hurt that. Yes, a three inches of solid oak, you know. You're not kidding. He's got the thickest head in... Oh, you mean the door. <laughs> Mrs. Floggett, I just thought of something. Have you got a hairpin? Oh, don't bother about your hair, Cyril. Who's going to see you up here? <laughs> no. I mean, we could have a go at picking the lock. Picking the lock? Oh, Cyril, do you know how to do it then? No, do you? Here, yeah, I've just thought of something. What? Just as well that boy didn't try and break it down, I saw a picture once and a fella broke his arm. You see, that door's three inches of solid oak. Yes, 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 Mr. Thatcher, we it's know. It's oak, you see. Oh, Daisy, look, we've got to get in there somehow to get the fireworks. You won't get through that door. Oh, lummy, if only there were a window or something. Oh, there is a window. Well, why didn't you say so before? Oh, well, you seem to have your mind set on getting through the door. And you won't get through that door because it's three, three inches, inches of, of solid, solid oak. oak. Oh. Now that's the window Oh dear, isn't it small? A human being couldn't get through that Here, I bet I could Maybe, but I was talking about human beings <laughs> Anyway, I don't suppose you could even get up there Well, I've got a ladder, but you'll have to watch out when you step on the third, fifth and ninth rungs Why? They're not there <laughs> Here, if you give me a lift onto the edge of this water bat I think I could just about reach it. All right, then, come on. Right, yes. Oh. Have a go. Yes. Oh, Ready? Come on. Ooh. Ooh. Across the daisy. Ooh. Ooh. Go on. Up, Sigurd. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. There. Good lad, Cyril. Well, I'm on the silt. Shall I put my feet through first? Yes, that's best. Righto. Open it first. Oh, never mind. Well, can you get through now? Yeah, I think so. It, it's, it's a bit tight, but, but I think... Here, I'm stuck. Oh, what do we do now? Oh, I think I'll go home. But, Daisy, we can't just leave him sticking out of the window like that. I don't know. When he's weathered a bit, he'll match all the other gargoyles. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Cyril. Cyril, breathe in. Now hold your breath and wiggle around. Wiggle around, that's right. That's the way. <laughs> Cyril, are you all right? Cyril. Cyril? Cyril. Oh, I forgot. It's all right. You can breathe out now. <laughs> oh, so, here, here, and I'll stalk in here. Well, get the key and open the door. I can't see it. Just a minute, I'll strike a match. Cyril, oh, no, 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 don't. No, no. Don't, the fireworks. Oh, dear. Oh. Oh. Now, we go quick before they all go off. Yes, Help Daisy. me up to the window. Go on, yes. now pass me up that bucket. Yes, where? Oh, quick, yes. Come here on. it is, Daisy, oh. look. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> I'm soaking. What about the fireworks? That soaked as well. Oh, good. What, no, what, all of them? Yeah, most of the water went right in the box. Oh, dear. well, that's it. Open the door and come out. Do you know, I've been thinking we should have tried the other door. What, what other door? There's another door to that room that leads off the pantry. What? what? Yes, and we never even bothered to lock that. Oh. <laughs> Hello? Hello? What? Now, you'll have to speak up. I can't hear you. What? Well, if you ever do get any fireworks, you can do the same with them. <laughs> Sauce. Any luck? No. And that's the last old sailor in the book. Oh, dear. I don't know what we're going to do, Gert. I do wish Wally was here. Why? What could he do? Nothing. I just wish he was here. I miss him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gert, it's Guy Fawkes night, not St. Valentine's Day. Mind you, it might just as well be. There'll be no fireworks in Russet Green tonight. I know. And think of it, they started these displays a hundred years ago, and it's all our fault. Daisy, you can't blame us for that. We weren't here a hundred years ago. Oh. <laughs> all right, <Bert. laughs> Sometimes I wonder if it's worth it. Daisy, <laughs> here, Daisy, I've just got an idea. As if we didn't have troubles enough. Well, come on, what is it? Look, why don't we go around the village and ask everyone who's got fireworks if they'll sell them back to us? Good. I don't want to worry you, but I think you've had a brainwave. What? Is that bad? <laughs> in your case, it's unique. Cyril, look after the shop. We're going out. Cyril. Cyril. C oh. We don't have to worry. Cyril is his watchful self again. <laughs> oh, it's a bit nippy this afternoon. Come on, Gert, we'll try this house first. It's Mrs. Bennett's, isn't it? Yes, you can tell by her washing. Disgraceful, isn't it? Yes. You go up, Gert. I don't want to see her. We had a bit of a round the shop this morning. All right. Mind, I don't know if she's got any. Afternoon. Oh, good afternoon, Mrs. Bennett. Something I can do? Yes. Well, you see, it's about some fireworks. Fireworks? Huh. I'm against them. 
They should be banned by law. They're nasty, noisy instruments of the devil, and they frighten children, terrify animals, disturb the peace, and they make a dreadful smell and litter the place with rubbish. And what's more, they're dangerous. Fireworks? Huh. <laughs> but it... But did she have any? I don't know. She wouldn't say. <laughs> Old Grandad Moles. I know he bought some. Come on. Hello, Mr. Mole. Ah, oh, where have you been? Well, nowhere. We've come to ask you about the fireworks. Oh, that's what I've always said. Eh? The ones we sold you. We want to buy them back. Oh, the poor fella. You have another go, Daisy. <laughs> the fireworks you bought yesterday. Oh, was he on his bicycle? <laughs> What about the fireworks you bought? Oh, yes, 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 yes. They keep them at school too long nowadays. Oh, <laughs> lummy, Daisy. Mm. Oh, I think so, too. He read it in a book, you know. Look, I'll have one more go. <laughs> Mr. Mole, we wanted to buy back your fireworks. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's the hot water that kills them. <laughs> oh, oh, I give up. Come on, Gert. Bye-bye, Mr. Mole. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, oh, by the way, those fireworks you sold me. We've got through. Yes? I set them off this morning. They were lovely. <laughs> well, Gert, this is about the only place we haven't tried. Who lives here? I'm not sure. They haven't been here long. Hello. Oh, what a pretty kid. Hello, love. Isn't that a nice dolly? Yes, this is Belinda. Father Christmas brought her. Oh, she's lovely. Now, look, tell me, dear, did Daddy buy you any fireworks this year? I don't know. I've been down in the meadow talking to the squirrels and bunny rabbits all day long. Oh. <laughs> what did they say? They said that at the end of the rainbow there's a big pot of gold. Hmm. Yes. So you haven't got any fireworks then? Did you want something? Yes, we do. Very much. Oh, well, if you give me two shillings, I'll tell you where you can get all the fireworks you want. Oh, marvellous. Well, here you are then, dear. Two bob. Look, now, where do we go? You go home, close your eyes, turn around three times and wish, and the fairies will fill your house with fireworks. Bye-bye. <laughs> Well, Gert, nobody can say we haven't tried. Daisy, we'll still have the bonfire. Bonfire night's no good without fireworks. It's like, um, it's like television without Richard Dimbleby. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can we do? Nothing. We've tried every shop in the district, every house in the village. There's nothing left to try. Here, here, Daisy. There's one thing we haven't tried. What's that? I'll have a go at anything. Well... Close your eyes, turn round three times. <laughs> oh, Gert, that is a doll. Well, it's worth trying. I think the strain's been too much for oh, you. Oh, no. Come on, Dave. <laughs> now, let's have a go anyway. Oh, well, you can if you want to. I'm not. Oh, no, look. We'll have to do it together. Well, come on, Dave. There's no harm in trying. Oh, all right. I might as well have me two bobs with. All right. <laughs> now then, turn round three times. One, One two, two, three. three. Now recite this. <laughs> what, together? Yes. Gert and Daisy, close your eyes, then you'll get a big surprise. Fairy, fairy, tell me true, what have you brought me? Hello, you two. <laughs> you must have turned round the wrong way, Gert. All we've, all we've got is a witch. Oh, oh, Mother Butler, what do you want? I've just heard about your latest effort. Just about what I'd expect from you two. Ruining bonfire night for the old village. It wasn't our fault. And anyway, it's none of your business. Everything in this village is her business. Now, don't you come the old acid with me, spoiling the kids' pleasure. If I'd my way, you'd be sent to Dundee. You mean Coventry, Gizieri. I mean <laughs> Dundee, Emma. It's further away. <laughs> and don't interrupt. I'm sorry, Gizieri. I don't want to cause no ill feeling. <laughs> Call yourselves shopkeepers. You're indeficient, the pair of you. You can't even deliver a few fireworks without making a mess of it. Why are you so interested in it, anyway? I don't care for myself. I don't much care for you, either. <laughs> I'm thinking of the poor little kiddies, what you've done out of their harmless fun. Who I could hear, as if she cared. Now, don't try to put me off. Oh, dear, I had something in my mind, and now it's gone. <laughs> they probably got frightened in there all by itself. <laughs> You're useless, you are. Now, do you hear it? Shut up, Emma. You've got no sense of civic pride. You can talk. You've got no sense. Anyway, it was just bad luck. 
An accident could happen to anyone. Not to me, it couldn't. <laughs> well, hang on, we'll try and arrange one. <laughs> Shut up, Emma. I'll take no notice of her, Mrs. Smead. She's a fathead. Here, yeah. don't you tell her I'm a fathead. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were keeping it a secret. <laughs> I reckon there's been dishonesty somewhere. Yeah, that's enough of that. I'll yeah. tell you what I'll do. Are you do. threatening me again? No, it's the same threat. Oh, get out of it. Go on. Oh, we're going. Come on, Emma. Let's get our fireworks ready. That's right. Go and get... Just a minute. Your fireworks? Yes, we bought a lock in strawberries last week. Well, if you're so keen on village pride, why don't you give them to the village for the display? Not likely. We paid for them and we're going to watch them. Come on, Emma. Like you heard it, Eddie. <laughs> Well, of all the cheek, spouting about village pride and keeping her fireworks to herself. Yes, yeah, she ought to practice what she screeches. Mm. Excuse me, Mrs. Floggett. What is it, Emma? I hope she won't be offended because I don't want to cause no ill feelings. Uh, yes. But I don't want the display to be cancelled, so I've bought you some of our fireworks. There you are. Take her. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Say. Say, good old Emma. We can have the display after all. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go so fast as say that. Why? Well, I know every little helps, but we shan't get far with eight me squib and a packet of sparklers. <laughs> Bye-bye, Tom. Hear that, Gert? Tom says old Mother Butler's been going around telling everyone we ruined the fireworks on purpose. Oh, she's a menace. Why did she ever come down to Russet Green? Didn't you know? Her old man sent her down for a rest. She doesn't need a rest. Nobody does. <laughs> oh, Gert, there must be something we can do. All I can think of is to leave the district. Hello, ladies. Tinkle, tinkle. Here I am again. George Bell, the shopkeeper's friend. Oh, Mr. Bell, I didn't see you coming. You did give me a shock. Oh, sorry, but I'm one of the electric bells. <laughs> Get it? Shock, electric bells, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mr. Bell, yes. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah. Look, listen, listen. Does your firm sell fireworks? No. Mind you, they'll give me a rocket if my sales go down. <laughs> I'll tell you what I have got in the van, though. Some crackers. Firecrackers? No, cream crackers. Oh. <laughs> With a cheesy flavour. Yes, yeah, like some of your jokes. <laughs> Anyway, all we're interested in at the moment is fireworks. Oh, that's what you say at the minute, ladies. But you haven't seen Crumble, the Wonder Loaf. Just the thing for people on a diet. Why, is there no starch in it? Oh, yes, plenty. It just tastes so horrible you can't eat it. <laughs> well, we couldn't afford it anyway. We're saving up to buy an ordinary loaf. <laughs> <laughs> very funny, very funny, very funny. <laughs> Here. How about some beauty preparations? Then? Oh, no, thanks. We've got plenty of those. No, this is a new line. It's made specially for you by Mr. Max Milligan of Pontypridd. Don't even know him. Here, here's his new range of perfumes. Look at this. Evening in Care Philly. Moon over Tony Pandy. <laughs> here's a smasher. Ashes of anthracite. <laughs> now, each perfume is designed to appeal to a different type of male, you see. Amorous, passionate, jaded, hungry. Hungry? What does that smell like? Steak and kidney pudding. <laughs> And look, here's his very special one. Milligan number five. Comes in three strengths called Come Hither, Into My Arms, and Oh, Put Me Down. I've never heard of the firm. What? Mr. Max Milligan of Pontypridd doesn't make up for a lot of the big Hollywood stars, you know. Who, for instance? Uh, Lassie, Flash the Wonder Horse, <laughs> Beast from Outer Space. Uh... But they're all animals. Don't any people use it? Oh, lots of famous Hollywood stars use his stuff. There's uh, Myrtle Bludgeon, Felicity Crud, Philomena Dangle. <laughs> They all use these perfumes by the gallon. I've never heard of any of them. Maybe not, but you can smell them for miles. Oh, <laughs> Riley Gert, look at this bottle. Milligan's all-purpose toilet water. Yes. It says on the label, a dab behind the ears makes you irresistible. Two spoonfuls in water make a fine gargle, and the liquid undiluted can be used to remove old paint. Oh, <laughs> charming. Mr Bell, is this stuff really as powerful as that? What? Powerful? A girl I know hadn't had a date for three years. She got desperate, emptied old bottle behind her ears. Did she get a date? No, her ears fell off. <laughs> oh, in that case, we're not really interested. Now, why not go over to the Red Lion and try and sell some to greet her? Oh, that's a good idea. If she won't buy a bottle of my stock, I can buy a bottle of hers. Yeah, <laughs> Be seen you. Cheerio. Tinkle, tinkle. Mr. Max Milligan of Pontypridd. Ah, oh, here we are, the old red line then. Hello, Greta, me love. If the beer tastes as good as you look, I'll have a gallon. Oh, hello, 
Mr. Bell. You are the one, the things you say. You remind me of one of my boyfriends. Oh, uh, which one? Well, you don't expect me to remember his name, do you? You haven't seen him for a fortnight. <laughs> Do you know, funny thing, it was exactly a year ago I met him on Guy Fox night. Really? Yes, he invited me round to see his fire. Oh, where was that? In his front room. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was no good. You can't have fireworks in the front room. That's what you think. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know this... Fine, fa- please. Oh, don't fuss. Yes, do you know, this chap, he was a romantic devil, brought me some sweets once and said ha- I had to give him a kiss for each one. Oh, charming. No exhaustion, they was hundreds and thousands. <laughs> Mind you, very different to the chap I went out with last night. Oh, he was shy. What do you mean? Well, when we got to the front door, he said, if I try and kiss you, will you shout for help? Go on, what did you say? I said, you think you're going to need any help? <laughs> Do you know, honestly, I... Fine, please. Oh, get yourself under control. (laughs) Now, then, where was I? You know, you want to be a bit careful of these shy fellas, Greta. Don't trust them too far. Oh, I don't trust them too near. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, this chap was too young to be dangerous. He was only about 21. What, did he tell you he's Asian? Mm, Didn't have to. I counted the rings under his eyes. (laughs) Do you know, he took me home to meet his brother, professional footballer he was. Oh, yes, forward? Yes, very. (laughs) Actually, I went out with him a couple of times, but I had to give him up. I didn't like the way he spoke. What do you mean? Well, he used to end all his sentences with a proposition. No, 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 you mean a preposition. I know what I mean. (laughs) (laughs) Do you know, and what's what? please. Oh, impetuous devil. (laughs) Do you know, this chap, nasty piece of work he was, he insulted me. Did he? Yes, he asked me if I could dance. Oh? Well, what's wrong with that? I was dancing with him at the time. Oh. oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, I'd better be on my way. Get home in time to see the fireworks. Pity you're not having any down here. Yes, I will, miss them. I love fireworks. Do you Fine, know... Fine, please. Oh, don't stretch my good nature. <laughs> don't. <laughs> yes, do you know, as I was saying, when I worked the horse and trumpeter, they had a real do there on Guy Fox night. Biggest bonfire in the district. <gasps> they let fireworks off in the bar. Oh, I do miss it. Why did you leave, then? The place burned down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. Well, I'm off. See you next trip, Peter. Cheerio and tickle, tickle. Pine, please. Right, oh, Tom, I can deal with you now. <laughs> can you? Oh, that's what you drink. Come over oh, here. Oh, and... <laughs> Well, I made out the poster cancelling the display. Shall I put it up? What have you put? I'll read it. The firework display on the castle lawn that will be held at 7.30 will not be held. There. (laughs) But what did you want it would be held for, then? Well, that's because some people didn't know it was to be held in the first place. Well, if they didn't know in the first place, it wasn't going to be... I mean, if it wasn't in the first place going to be... Oh, never mind. Go, put it in the window. All right. You know, it's a shame about the children days, isn't it? They look forward to Guy Fawkes night. Yes, they look a long way, too. They've been asking for a penny for the guy since August. <laughs> no, it's not the children I'm thinking about. They can always find something to set light to. Good afternoon, ladies. Hello, Hello Mr. Niggle. You can destroy that poster, ladies. All is well. There will be celebrations tonight. Why? I've been working in my shed all day. <laughs> oh, lummy. That's enough reason for a celebration in itself. Using my expert knowledge of the sciences, I have evolved the Niggle multi-purpose pyrotechnic. Oh, that's no good to us. We want fireworks. <laughs> no, no, you don't understand. I have produced a very huge combustible explosive which generates the ornamental display. Now, do I make sense? <laughs> well, you never have since we met you, but why should, you, why should you start now? Ladies, I have made a firework. A firework? Still, one's no good to us. Precisely, but this is no ordinary firework. Well, Gert, one of us has got to be mug enough to ask him. (laughs) Mr Niggle, what does it do? Well, now then, as soon as the blue paper is ignited, it leaps explosively across the ground like a kangaroo. You see, in the bottom, I have crackers. Have crackers? (laughs) Lummy, you are crackers. (laughs) Then it sits up on end and shoots forth a column of multicoloured sparks. Following that, it spins round on its own orbit presenting in coloured smokes a pictorial representation of the Battle of Jutland. At the same time, patriotic music will be heard. And how did it do that? Oh, it don't. Cyril stands behind it, playing his mouth off. What does it do at the end? Oh, at the end, it whizzes high in the air, circles the field, and finishes by writing Rule Britannia in green flame. Ooh. You mean that little cylinder on your hand cart can do all that? Well, I don't know. I haven't tried. But wouldn't it be lovely if it could? Let's go outside now and try, try the prototype. 
I shall need a, a, a box of matches and a large piece of cheese. Cheese? What do you want that for? I'm starving. <laughs> nothing to eat since tea time, and it's half past four now. Oh, come on. Well, there she is, ladies. Now, I'll place her down here. Oh, I do hope it works. Mr. Niggle, if it does, can you make any more? Oh, hundreds, ladies, hundreds. Oh, oh what a relief. Isn't marvellous, isn't yes, it? wonderful. Ooh. Oh, let me trouble again. Now then, what bit of mischief are you up to on Emma's bit of pavement? Mind your own business. Come on, Mr. Niggle. Uh, Emma? Emma? There's goings on out here. Oh, good. I'll just get an hat on and I'll be out. Yes, a chilly business being nosy. Right, mm. ladies, here we are. Now, stand back. Ooh. Oh. 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 Now, oh. mind, it's due to explode now. Be careful. Where's it gone? I don't know. It doesn't work. It works. Me. It works. Amazing. Oh, I didn't think much of that. It yeah, hasn't it turned warm? I'm sweltering. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Your hat's on fire. <laughs> Your hat's on fire. Oh, Emma, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you aren't half a Oh, there you are. It's out now. But the heat's melted all the wax fruit. Oh, it is a mess. <laughs> Oh, Emma, you're a scream. You've ruined it. <laughs> You've got a wonderful sense of humour. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, it's your act. <laughs> Everyone in the village is here. Isn't it lovely? Gert, old Niggle certainly saved the day. Yes, here he is now. Well done, Niggle. Evening, ladies. Well, we're ready, Mr. Niggle. Where's all the fireworks? It's in my pocket. It? You mean there's only one? Yes. You said you could make hundreds. Well, I could. It'd take me several months. <laughs> that means it's all off again. And here comes Lord Russell. Oh, well, it's our fault, Gert. Come on, let's go and apologise. I don't know what we can say to him. <laughs> can't be helped. We just have to tell him. Oh, good evening, Your Lordship. Hello, ladies. I'm dreadfully sorry, but... Oh, the... don't you apologise. It was all our fault. Oh, nonsense, nonsense. I should have remembered to cancel... No, 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 it was our fault. Cancel what? Well, you see, I've had this standing order with Higginbottoms for 15 years, and I didn't like to offend them, so I, I had to take them. What's he talking about, girl? Mm -hmm. So there they all are in the back of the car. They're all what are? Well, Forty pounds worth of fireworks I just can't use. Oh, <laughs> that's what you think. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, it's been a lovely evening, hasn't it, Days? Much nicer than a Guy Fawkes night in London. Gert. But everything's different down here somehow. Now, look at the way everyone lives. Gert. Just wandering along, never giving two hoots for the time. Gert. Taking things just as they come, you know. One day much the same as another. Yes, it's just as well, really. Gert, do you realise they're out there celebrating Guy Fawkes Day? I know. But it's only November the 2nd. Well... <laughs> You've been listening to Floggits with Elsie and Doris Waters, Joan Sims, Hugh Paddock, Ronnie Barker, Doris Rogers and Ron Moody. The script was by Terry Nation, John Junkin and Dave Freeman and this recorded production was by Bill Gates. <laughs>